Hello everybody. Welcome to my workshop. Um, I've tied it up today. You wouldn't think it by looking behind me. Look, state of it. But that is a new shelf system I've got there. Uh, so I've got all my finishes and waxes there. Um, I'm stalling because I'm hoping that one of my earworms is about to come back in because he dropped out about 30 seconds before we went live. So I'm just going to waffle for a couple of seconds. Um, how is everybody? I hope you're all well. Uh, it's cold and damp and horrible here today. A um, couple of announcements. Uh, I have two new channel supporters. Um, I am now a supported turner for True Grit Finishes, who have just popped into the chat. Hello, Dan and or Katie. Um, so I now represent True Grit Finishes. And at Harrogate Show, I was approached by O3 Adhesives. And the channel is now um, supported by O3 Adhesives. If you look at the link in the description of this live, um, O3 Adhesives have very generously given a 10% discount code. So if you use GWT10 in the checkout, you get 10% off everything you purchase from their website. Um, doesn't look like he's popping back in. So if he does come back in, oh, wait a minute. There he is. <laughs> he's back. <laughs> he's back there just in time. Right, so right. Right. I'm joined, helping me tonight by the old hand, Pete, who's done this a thousand times, and the new boy, Doug Miller at Woodspun <laughs> Rounds, joining us all the way from America. Welcome along, Doug. Thank you for coming. I'm good. Glad to be here. Thank you. That's quite all right. So uh, they're going to be looking after you. Pete's going to be looking after Doug. And I'm going to be turning. What am I going to be turning? I'm going to be turning a lump of wood into a goblet. So I'm going to put them in the background. And I'm going to go over and stand here. Right, so there's there's some confusion as to what this wood is. The person who gave it to me was sure it was new, but I'm pretty certain it's not you. Um, there is some thought that it might be Leylandi, and we'll basically just see as we go. Um, but what I'm going to do is turn this into try to turn it into an elegant shaped goblet. So I'm going to take my specs off and put my safety specs on. Those ones. And while I'm doing that, start the lathe off at zero, bring it up to speed. The earworms will tell me who's in. Yeah, before we do that, Mark, I'm getting a bit of feedback through my um, sound here. Is that I your microphone? Myself, so it's not me. Is that your microphone there, Doug? No, it's yeah, not. No, sir. Well, first one in tonight was Doug, and then me, and then uh, when the wood turns in. Jim Matthew, Barry Fisher, Brian at Hartwood, Terry Bartlett, Hewitt, wouldn't it be nice? Norman Greenwell, good evening. Dave Oakey, David J. Heath, Mark Stroughton, Kevin Howell, Steve S. K. Craft, Todd at Glencoe Woodworks. Take us down a bit more. Ward Wilson. Mr. G's wood turning. 
Damn it, true group finishes. Stubber. Wouldn't it be nice again? Do a roost again. Uh, Paul Hayton. Shirt in girl. Tipsy Turner. Steve Gordon. TC Woodwork, Simon at Fly Coast, uh, Wood Turning, Martin Ford, I think that's it. Oh, Brian with a Y. Good evening, everyone. I've missed you out. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through the list. How to do, everybody? And I'm sorry, that was me when I, I had to reopen uh, the Facebook chat or the YouTube chat and I opened that mic too. Ah. Uh, that's all right, don't worry about it. That's why there was 20 or 30 seconds delay there. <laughs> right, so all I'm doing is just getting this down around, using a spindle roughing gouge. Um, it's nice and stable now, so I'm about 1,600, 1,700 revs. Come in, watch yourself, Mark. Who's up? Kim. Hello, Kim. Sorry, darling, how are you? Kim's not been very well the last couple of days, so I hope she feels better. Get more, Kim. Right. And Susie, the Swiss Turner, has joined us. So I'm just going to use a barring tool just to clean up the end of this. Just want it nice and level. And then I'll start putting some shape on here with three ace ball gouge. And Ruby's joined us as well. Good evening, Ruby. Hello, Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Ruby's still in France. Tourists a little bit low. Going for a bit of a bell shape tonight. Benjamin has joined us with, you know what you need, Kim? A nice big, big mac and fries and a Coke. <laughs> make you feel better. Mm. See, if we'd have that overhead, we'd have seen that catch. That's really a catch. So just using the body. Um, Slizy 88. Is that who the wood came from? He said, agreed, now you're in. It doesn't look like you. That might be the person I'm making this for. Uh, 
And she's just asking for an overhead camera view. Overhead? Yeah. How's that? Looks good. It's good, yep. Yeah. I'm just thinking about that Big Mac comment a minute ago. I used to think Big Macs were comfort food and anymore I can't I can't do it. I can't touch it. No, I, I raised my kids and they, they liked going to McDonald's, but I never ate the McDonald's until I was in my forties. And we went to Sweden and over there they camped McDonald's as a restaurant. It was the only food available, so I ate it there. He was asking, is, is this wood green? No, it's dry. What's the smell right now? You're cutting it. Hey? What does it smell like now? You're cutting into it. There's no discernible smell. Mm. Yeah, I still think it's like under. And if I stop my lathe, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's you. No idea what it is. It's a good finish. Could that be a hard maple of some kind? Uh, very much doubt it. <clears throat> Jim Matthews asked, I missed the question. What would be the best finish for a turned goblet to drink wine alcohol from? Is there such a finish? Ruby's actually answered it and said uh, Rustin's plastic coat with jam. Yeah, that's what I'll go with. Gav today has joined us. Good evening. Hi, Gav. Yes, Gav, it's me, it's Doug. <laughs> Stuart's money's on Willow. Uh, it's not Willow. It's got too much, too much uh, grain in it for Willow. She was asking, is it going to be a one, two, or three part go goblet? Hopefully, <laughs> just one part. <laughs> Yeah, you've not had lessons from Mike yet, so. Right. So that's the shape on the outside. Now I'm just going to... Anthony Morley is in. How about the inside? Anthony Green is there. Let's go one more for Chuck because he's asking for a friend. Brian? Yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> right, that needs to come. So, All right. Stuart Shed said, What did you lot buy at Harrogate Show? He's got his didn't get there. Oh, I didn't get there either, Joey. Um, but Terry bought everything anyway, so. There was nothing left after Terry. After Terry and Wayne. Yes, both had a major shopping spree. First thing I saw of Terry there was him sitting on his scooter with a lap full of stuff. <clears throat> Brian with a wife said that would make a good whiskey glass, Mark. It's thistle shaped. Yeah, well, it's kind of thistle, thistle-ish that I was going for. I 
Alright. Gonna draw this up with a spindle catch. George in the way, don't worry about it. Get your drilling done first, we'll, we'll watch more of it. Apparently Wayne even helped Terry spend his money. Precious is in. And we have some excellent news. Barry from Woodturn by Barry, with Barry. Went to the consultant today. His lungs are now crystal clear, no cancer, all gone. Well done. Oh, brilliant. Tremendous. Rob CB is in the house. It's right. going to switch to different spindle gouge. This is an Ashley Oils spindle gouge called a long and strong. This is making a lot of noise because obviously the spindle gouge is a long way over the tool rest and the wood is a long way away from the chuck. Mark, we don't see the back of your head anyway. Okay. How's that? That's grand. What I'm going to do is just put this. I want to lower a bit of that angle as well. Yeah, it's going to have to come back. <clears throat> Let's try this. Hey, it's good to see you back on the channel, Rob. We haven't seen you for a while. Rob, you've seen it. Andy's Corny's Creations has arrived. Hey, Andy. Hello, Andy. How are you? Nice to see you in night. I was thinking about Rob the other day and uh, wondered where where he had gone. Wondered if anybody had seen anything of him. I had not. So it is good to see him back on.
a little bit of a lump just there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Get rid of the nib at the bottom. I'm not going to go right down into the bulb. There's no need to. I'm about halfway down in there at the moment. Yeah, so I'm about there. What I am going to do is just... Just to find the shape, smooth the shape up a little bit. On the outside. And Martin Ford is in and Jennifer's Craft and Creations is in. Good evening, Jennifer and Martin. Hi, Jennifer. And Martin as well. Good to see you. Mate. <clears throat> that was the Ashley Isle skew. This one's a Colin Way skew. Just use the whole arsenal. Well, I do like. I need to turn this on. Sorry, it's going to wash out. Just for a second. I do like just finishing off with the skew now, where I can. Right, so I'm going to back the speed down. Not that far. To about 800. And I am going to have to go a bit noisy, so I do apologise. Well, it's quiet for us and it's for you. <clears throat> but yeah, there is a, there's a world difference between the coal and waste and the actual skew. Both have um, very strong positives, but in different areas. Gav's got the actual skew on his Christmas list, and if you get it, you won't regret it. It's a lovely tool. Pete, what would you say those differences are? Uh, Colwyn Way skew is um, a fine detail in finishing. It vibrates if you put under heavy work. The Ashley Isle skew will just chew through wood, no problem at all. It's strong, moves beautifully. It doesn't have any fear of vibration in it at all. I'm sure you could make it vibrate if you tried hard enough, but you don't feel it. And it's just a heavy duty beautiful tool for doing anything you can do with a skew but in a heavy way okay come down to a bit more artistic stuff than the colwyn's um a thinner writer they've got lovely feel when you're controlling them in in fine detail mm -hmm. as a sort of semi-production turner i find Coal and waste skew I can use on certain things, but it's, I tend to set a tool rest height and leave it there. So I'm using spindle gauge and skew from the same position. And the coal and way is just a little bit too finessed for that. I've got to adjust yeah. for it every time. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go through it. Here lately, I, and I know it's me, I'm not using my skew nearly enough. But I'm finding that on those little light cuts like Mark was just doing there with the skew, that's when I have my troubles. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, lightweight skew is probably going to help with that. I mean, we've got a common way skew in, in this country, and um, I held off buying one for quite a long time. I looked at them and thought, that looks interesting. But, um, only after Mark bought one, I got to play with his, I thought I'd spend some money on it. You know, mm. I like to try, try things out before I buy them. Sure. But um, I went for the medium sized one, not the large one, because I knew it was for finesse work only. Um, and I went for the Ashley Isles for my sort of day to day skew. Okay. And I also use. Um, well, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten skews lined up there. <laughs> uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight skews. Yeah, it's um, different skews for different jobs. Right. Mark. Yes. Quick message from my sponsor. Oh. <laughs> bar. I have one waiting upstairs. Yeah. Half an hour in, mate. And I've got 48 arriving tomorrow. <laughs> bit of sanding sealer. Bit of cellulose sanding sealer for this. Now, what I'm doing is I am going to completely finish this section, right? Inside and out. Because once I start on the stem, I don't want to come back to it. So this is sanded to 240. Sanding sealer. Where's my tub? And now we're going to go with the true grit. Exactly the same process as everybody's used to with... Uh, Yorkshire quit, but we have had a couple of testers say that they felt that true grit was actually able to be used from 180 instead of 240, but I still do the same process because I figure if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So lay it down to zeros, turn a lathe on, bring the speed up to... 350. Uh, 500 if your lathe will only go to 500. That's fine, but when you turn it on, just stand to the side because it will spray a little bit off. <clears throat> Stuart just said, this. Mark, you've got more skews than I've got turning tools. Well, I've, I've got three sets of tools because when I teach... The student has their own set, and I have my set, which I turn with. And then when I demonstrate, I've got another set that I use just for demonstrating. I know it sounds extravagant, but um, I like to be able to offer the students to be able to use their own set of tools. And I don't want them using my best tools. <laughs> A couple of suggestions on the wood. It's either larch or birch, maybe. The thing is, and I think that this is what made the person who gave it to me think it was you. When the ends have been sealed, the ends look orange. Mm. They look like that orangey you color. As soon as you cut into them, it's plain white. So you just work this in two or three minutes at the quick breakdown. No change in this from the old Yorkshire grid. Process is exactly the same. Greg Alexander is in. Good evening. Morning, afternoon, whatever it is. Right. So clean piece of paper, pick the speed up,
Uh, mixed strands, you know, something I mentioned earlier, but um, just what the comment he said, what didn't you buy at Harrogate? Would be more like it, Terry. <laughs> he didn't buy me a coffee. That's one, that's for sure. I tell you what, I didn't get the sanding arbor that I requested either. Oh, who did you ask to get that, him or me? Both. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I did buy a sanding arbor. I bought three for myself, but I can send you one because I haven't used it yet, if you like. Yeah, right. Oh, I've got five of them here. I just, um. Well, when you come one down. Required a replacement, but. When you yeah. come down to help me build my quiet room, yeah. the, uh, the jet harrier in the corner there. Right. That is the top done. Benjamin said, I've made a terrible roast dinner. I've had to douse it with grated cheese. Ah, oh, yeah, that is gross. Right. So now I'm just going to get rid of some bulk. Camera right on. And Robert Klingspore Abrasive said, would Velcro back 50 millimeter and 75 millimeter belt discs be useful for the quick polishing? I don't think so, no, not really. We flew just a little bit too open then. <clears throat> Local back felt this might be useful in um, wax polishing, possibly, in certain circumstances, but um, Terry says that Brian was supposed to get that arbor for you, Pete. Yeah, well, you know, they turned up here, drank all my beer, ate all my food. <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed that Brian actually left you the cake. Because I did leave you the cake, forgot. yeah. Brian said, when you, I forgot that. <laughs> when you're doing goblets like this, you do want to try and keep as much strength in the stem for as long as you can. Okay. Todd, so just ask so, a question. At what point did you add the stock support with a tail, tennis ball, etc.? That's what I'm going to do right now. Right about now. Yeah. I was about to ask if you were going to try to do that free. Just let the end free, free on it. If I go for a 12 mil stem, which is quite common, then I very often don't use tailstock support. But if you go smaller than that, then it's needed at some point. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But Gilligan has just joined us. Good evening, Fred. Hi, Fred. Jim Matthews got a question. He said, should you use down and sealer before applying plastic coat? And would rustings be the final finish or do you need to polish that wax afterwards? Well, I'm going to have to defer to somebody else because I've never used rustings. Okay. It is, um, it's, a, it's a resin. So it is a final finish. Um, Yes, I would do something to to start with.
that's come to the end of that, so I'm going to switch back to a spindle couch. Martin Ford's yeah. going to go back to work. I am just going to change a tool rest to a shorter one. Ruby's commented on the rust and said that she would use sanding sealer, denib it, and then use the rust. And, and then if you wanted to, you could polish it later if you wanted to. That makes good sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's an interesting product. It is a thick plastic, so your plastic gives you your wood. So it is nice. well, called plastic out, um, clues in the name, I suppose. So it is alcohol proof. Um, it does the job. I can't say I like it very much, but it does the job. Right. When everybody first started talking about it, I was disappointed because Rustin is not a not a product that we can get here in the United States. But I understand it's owned by Sherman Williams, which has another product that is available here. I haven't looked in to see how accessible it is, but I need to do that, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure there's an American equivalent. Yes. A lot of the chemical stuff has difficulty getting exported and imported. Mm -hmm. So they might make it under a different name and uh, sell it locally. But um, because of the various health and safety requirements on plastic stuff, or solvent-based stuff, then it can be difficult to get things across the pond. Yeah, absolutely. Just like it's difficult for us to get chestnut products in general. There are a few we can get without too much trouble, but others can't get them at all. Yeah. Yeah, I know Terry's had difficulty with um, labeling issues and all sorts of cost requirements and so on and so mm. forth. Yes. Uh, Ruby said, check out Amazon for buying Rustins. Apparently, you can get it on there. Benjamin has just summed up my views on Rustin's. He said, adding Rustin's plastic out is like covering a lovely wooden floor with a carpet. I don't even want to know how far back that's gone. Yep, it looked like it got you pretty good. Back to there. Mm. That's bad. Ah, well. You want to finish that bit before you go back any further, really? happens it does i was reading the chat this time i'll go back and watch it later just so i can laugh at you robert cleanspore's got to question the coatings you use like wax and oil how do you select them is it by cosmetic effect or wood type or something else my answer to that is yes. Oh, right back to there. Sometimes it's even the performance of it. As a general rule, if I've got something which has got inclusions and interests, something like a bird or something with a bit of bark inclusion, then I want to go for a fairly satin oil type finish. If I've got something that is perfect and um, almost ceramic looking, then I want a gloss finish. Right. That's a general rule is not always applied. So that's going to need to be sanded and finished again. Bugger, bugger, bugger. So 
stay away from the skews, Mark. If you live by the skew, you die by the skew. Mick Stratton's uh, put in a little comment there, Mark. I mean, watching Mike Walk again. <laughs> right. Uh, this one. Now, I wasn't trying to be clever. I just, I do prefer the skew. As a finisher gives. <clears throat> See, I would, but I would have a pretty much a 45 degree angle on that um, cut in. Give me space for the skew to work. Right. Don't you find that with a skew that you need to use it a lot? In order to be very comfortable with it. Well, I use, I've got two main skews I use. For all the production work I'm doing, spindles and the doorknobs and all the stuff that I do batches of, I use the bigger Ashley Isles. One inch, yes. edged. For all the detail stuff, I use the Colwyn Way small skew mm. or the Colwyn Way the uh, 32 mil skew. I don't know if Ruby's published the pictures publicly yet, but um, she's been learning well in France this week. She showed me a picture of... Uh, Species time is fabulous. A, wood, a woodpecker with a chainsaw yep. carving. Yeah. Beautiful. It's kind of following up with my question. I I turn mostly bowls and things that are side grain, so I don't you know, a bowl gouge is my number one tool. I use half-inch bowl gouge more than I use anything. And so when I do pick up a skew, like this time of year when I'm doing Christmas trees and snowmen, those kinds of things, uh, it takes me a pretty good while to be comfortable with it again. Yeah. And still have yeah. runbacks. <laughs> um, I view the skew as being like a jealous girlfriend. Yeah. Take it down the pub, and if you just take your eyes off her for too long and you're talking to the wrong people, then she'll yeah. bite you. Absolutely. It's one of those things you've got to pay total attention to, or it'll come back and bite you. Yes, it will. But, um, it is, like you say, if, if you use it regularly, it, it becomes habit. You get less problems. I'm not saying you'll get rid of the problems. You wouldn't. You will always have a moment of inattention. Exactly. I've watched uh, one of Ruby's compatriots, Cade Bulger, there in Canada. He uses almost exclusively a skew. And he's just, he's an artist with a thing. Yeah. <clears throat> makes it do things I I can't figure out how in the world that, that skew makes those curves like that. Ruby said, Mark, you finish the cup and you can tie it to the life centre and apply tension. But I don't think you're going thin enough to warrant that, really. No, it's not, it's not ultra thin. Yeah. Applying tension, that's 
Ruby, that's the same way I like to do goblets too, but that's typically when I'm going down to the 16th or something silly like that, 330 seconds. Yeah, I, I just realized how silly it is. I don't do it anymore. Cool, just plenty fair enough. Lewis has joined us. Scott Crossman. Good evening. Hey, Lewis. That skate back is when you've got the flute too open. When you start to cut. I've got to say, Mark, mm -hmm. it's uh, new jewels, aren't they? The shark ones. They yes, like? they are. Shall I buy some? They are very much like the Vicmark shark jewels. I think they're modelled on them. Yeah. 57 mil uh, internal grip, 62 mil external. Um, they're lovely, actually. I've literally had them since four o'clock this afternoon. Right. Now, I am unafraid of the skew nowadays. I pick it up because I love it. Yes, I had a catch there. But it's not going to stop me using it. I'm kind of the same way, Mark. I, I'm not afraid of it, but at the same time, when it gives me a run back or a catch, it causes me a little cause for concern. If you get a catch with anything, it's a question of if you get a catch, there's a reason you got a catch. Figure it out. And 99% of the time, the reason is uh, you're in attention to detail. You've gone in wrong. You've looked away. I know why I came out. I know why I came out. Because as I was coming over, I was too far this way. Yeah. So I wasn't close into my body. And of course, as soon as that tip or the edge loses support, it's going to run uphill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now what I'm doing here, just after my finger underneath, to rest this just a fraction of it. I can know, Mark. And I'm just three more makes all the difference. Yeah. Roy just checked in. Good evening, Roy. Todd said, uh, this you can be therapeutic. Just slap scrape wood between the, uh, slap scrap wood between centers and just practice making eggs or snowmen, etc. Totally agree. Yes. Now I do just need to go in here. Just clean that up. Basically, just little plunging cuts. They're fine. Happy with that. To stop the lay, move it to a rest. Look, look at the base. <clears throat> Drop that. Bring that over there. Put that there. I'm going to use the small spindle couch now. This is a quarter inch Ashley Isles. 
a couple of comments on uh, Steve Jones. Um, Ruby said he's a marvel to watch. And ben, jo ben said Steve Jones is the worst person to watch. The guy who defeats physics. Steve Jones is brilliant because he has cut so many thousands of miles of timber with his crew. Your practice. No question about it. He is a marvel. We also got to remember when Steve puts a video out, it's usually Steve playing. Right. Can I screw this one up? <laughs> Excuse me. But that was a bit late on the mute switch. Hmm. Darren says Steve Jones, Gary Rance, Dave Dalby, and Richard Finley all worth a watch on the skew. I would add to that oh, yeah. um, Terry Bray, TJ Turnings, um, and several others actually, but uh, Terry is good with the skew. The only thing with Terry is you've got to remember that he's got a um, problem with his left wrist. So his grip on skew might not make perfect sense unless you understand that. Now, I do just need to be able to see. Sorry, this is going to wash out. But I've just got a little... bit there. Drop it to a rest. Mark, you've changed to us back on the screen. Hey. Eh? Sorry, I've turned my lights off. Yeah, can you put it back in the background as well? Yeah, they're having a little issue with. No problem. Yep, you're showing the screen with us, Mark. Put us back in the background. Oh, I don't know how that happened. How did that happen? Sorry about that. Thanks, StreamYard. Lost mm -hmm. a second there. Yes, Roy, I'm in the middle of re remodeling my workshop. Rex was asking if the skew is the best tool for making finials, especially fine, delicate touches. And I would say, Rex, if, if uh, you're comfortable with the skew, yes. How many how many finials I've turned with a half-inch bowl gouge? You know, it's, it's just the tool that you're most uh, comfortable with. Stephen, what do you join us? Hey, oh, Stephen. He's tuned in just to see it fly, apparently. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby.
the best tool for turning anything, whether it's finials or whatever, is the appropriate one that's in your hand. Whatever you're comfortable with is the right tool. Yep. Within certain parameters. Yeah, Ben said something there about the using a spindle gouge like Cindy Droza. She's made a living off using that spindle gouge, and I agree. But like yeah. Pete and I said, it's the tool that you're most comfortable with. I mean, most of the production stuff I do is small spindle work, and I alternate between skew and spindle gouge for the one that I can get the cut the most accurate and the most quickly with. Um, it's... I could probably do it all with a skew or I could probably do it all with a spindle, but they just, they got their benefits. You get used to doing things in a certain way. Mm -hmm. It's not, right. mine isn't the right way, mine is my way. It's not right. Okay, not right. time. Mark. This You're is it. One, sir. We just opened another one. Four till the hour, Mark. <laughs> right. Wow. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Didn't that come off all right? Oh, we got to take up the mic. Bum, bum, ba dum, bum. We just uh, crawl down under here and hide. Did go a bit thin when I. Oh, there you go. Uh, that looks. That looks like a fault in the wood. Yeah, there's a little fault. Just there's a little void. Just yep. in the side there. That might. Hey, is that that one again? Because I've got so much up here, what I'll do is I'll part that off tomorrow, do a stem, and make a three-piece goblet. Oh. Yeah, there you go. So, Looks like a Mike Walt goblet to me. Yeah. I did ask Mike to be a worm tonight. It's a shame he wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> bugger, bugger. Never mind. It happens. It's probably just why he's not here, because he would never let you forget it. No, but he's going to watch it. And man, is he going to laugh. <laughs> hey, You'll hear about it. Here, which was up on the social <clears> medias. <throat> so I did practice making a goblet today. That's all done properly. But that one just let go. Just shows, see? Do this all day long every day. It can happen to any of us. Absolutely. It, can, it does. So never mind. <clears throat> Carry on. Got another piece down there somewhere, which I will uh, do because I know the person who I was making that for is probably watching. Yep, certainly is. Over in a second. And I bet he wants a one piece goblet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right, Simon. I'll do it for you, mate. Right, so boo hoo. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Come on, nice on the inside. The finish is nice. Except obviously I had to go over this bit again. Bring guys back in. Rex B said it would make a great Christmas bell. Ding -ling. Ding -ling. Yeah. Though I got some purple art, so uh, I'll do a purple art stem with a tenon into there. And then yep. I'll use this as a base. Blood into the base, screw it all together. Oh, Rob, Rob, hasn't be sworn, Rob hasn't sworn for years. Planet are you living on, mate? But it, hey, do you know what? It happens. There's no point getting upset about it. Yeah. It happens to all of us. And I can guarantee it happens to Steve Jones. He just never films it. <laughs> he just it, never puts it out. And Richard Finley and Dave Dalby. All the, oh, yeah. all the great names, they all make mistakes. They just don't put it on YouTube or Facebook. Never mind. 
We will. Right, so that's an hour and a minute. Thank you very so much, everybody, for coming along and watching me screw up a couple of times. <laughs> it was going so well. I think that's really happy. It's just right. What was that? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's after nine o'clock. Shit does happen. Never mind. I was really pleased with that as well. That was Ruby's really off. Nice. She's, um, she's giving up. She's off. She's off in disgust. That's it. She'll be finding me later going, you're not my apprentice anymore, young man. <laughs> there you go. That's what it would have looked Good like. Night, Ruby. I'll speak to you when you get home. So that's, that's sort of... I think the proportions were right. The base was right. Stem was right. There is just, I don't know if you can see, just, I'm not making excuses because I should have seen it, but there's just a little void. Yep. Just in there. As soon as I, I didn't, I barely I, touched the I did the one sandpaper. live um, a few months back when I was covering for Terry. And I just started cutting into it and just about an inch behind the, the, the bowl, there's a flaw in the wood. And all the plans I had for the stem just went out the window because it was just like, yeah. this is going to go. <laughs> so yeah. I cut a yeah. very, very plain stem and just left it at that. But once you've got yeah. a flaw in the wood, then you're, you're kind of limited. And you don't know until you start into it. No, that's it. That, until you get down there, you don't you know don't. it's there. Yeah. It's a natural material. It grows on trees is the good part. <laughs> that's it's renewable. Sure that's the best part. It's renewable. Yep. Right. So... Thank you, Pete. You're welcome, Mark. Thanks for inviting me in. And thank you, Doug, for your first Thanks. ever earworming experience. It was a joy. Thank you. Um, folks, the reason uh, Doug has started taking interest in earworming is because we've persuaded him he's going to start doing some lives. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> so we've been helping him in the background, behind the scenes. Uh getting uh, the right microphones and cameras and advice and software. Hopefully, Doug will be doing some American live yeah, tournaments. Hello, Doc, and hold up to the camera, see if we can see from the bark and end green what it is. Sorry? I'll tell you, I'll get, I'll get the piece I trimmed it off of, which yeah. is... Uh, Good to see you in Rob CP. We um hope, hope to see you again a bit more often. Take care. Yeah. Mate. You've been missed, mate. Right. We were talking about you a few weeks back, actually. That's the bark. I put myself back on main screen again. That's the bark. See, so you look at that end. It looks orange. That's where it's been waxed. Look at that end white yeah hmm. that's the bark see i don't think that's you that's not you bark no not you bark, you no. is smaller i i think that might be leylandi sniff my word that was my first thought when you showed me the pictures earlier of leylandi but i i think it's leylandi but it did it's you normally get a smell of that even when it's dry. It smells like a cypress of some sort. Mm. So I I would say Lelandi, Birch, might be large. Trees of the world, number forty two. The large. If you're not old enough to understand that reference, go and watch Monty Pythons. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it turns up nice. Got some nice grain in it. it really is. But, yeah. I think it's a bit of Cypress, I reckon, of some sort. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Thanks, everybody. Cheers for coming along. Tuesday night's going to be the usual night now for me. Uh, during the lunchtime lives, just don't have time. 
I don't just do video. I can't, I can't uh, spend the time doing them. So uh, hopefully I Tuesday night now. Can I, I can't drink beer yeah. ill with me on lunchtime because I've got work. Exactly. Today, so. um, Evening's so better for me. Tuesday evenings now from now on, unless I'm away, and then Big can step in for me. Uh, not for January. I haven't got to work. <laughs> yeah. You you can't say you don't have internet anymore, Pete. You put a video out showing you do have video. Yeah, but I haven't got a workshop. Big Stratton says he thinks it's sick. Building the workshop as I, as we're talking. <laughs> it doesn't exist this morning. All yeah. Of this day. Looks great. Um, I only I have one camera you. operational. Um. So um, yeah, we're building. Show us again. There you go. What are you doing? No. Nice. Got the tool rack for the, um, part of my tools. I've got to come around the corner here yet. Um, got my buddy range sticker up. Uh, Lisa's finally painted for me. Nice um, one. I'll let you into a secret. That's up with Tack at the moment. I'm just figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. It's okay. It's what me, you did. Let me just throw you out. <laughs> <laughs> I was meant to exit you from Solo X. Never mind, shut up. Right. The numbers are dropping. Everybody's leaving. Thanks a lot for coming along, everybody. Really appreciate it. Good See you on. next week. Take care. Bye, everybody. Press the buttons.